Hi everyone and welcome to Professional Beauty and Hairdressers Journal Ireland webinar for this week. Big mouthful there. And uh, this week we're going to be talking to Nicola Murphy who owns Advanced Aesthetics Academy and Clinic um, in Waterford. Isn't that? Yes. Yeah. Um, lovely to see you Nicola and thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. And uh, we're going to be talking about the topic of returning to the classroom post-COVID. And as we're chatting, I suppose I'd invite anyone if they want to type in questions or whatever and send them in our direction. And um, that's absolutely no problem. And Nicola can answer them as we're going along. So I go straight ahead, Nicola. Um, I suppose what I've been saying to you was, you know, we've heard loads of people talking about, you know, what's going to happen when we return to the salons and you know, the different things that people are going to have to do to make things safer again. And what's like, in your opinion, because um, a huge part of your business obviously is the academy, what's the training environment going to look like and what do people need to be aware of? Um, well, I suppose with the training environment, it's going to follow all the same guidelines as the salon or the clinic or in hairdressing salon, it's it's going to be the same. I suppose the, the, the problem may be with um, social distancing with students, we may have to reduce class numbers, class sizes. Um, I know in our own academy, we do a lot of assessment-based training. So that means we have to have clients in. So it's like a realistic working environment. Mm -hmm. so that may be um, a little difficult. Um, and also it's, you know, you're in your training academies or your classroom based um, businesses, your, your open plan, which kind of it, it's, it can be a little bit more difficult there as well. So I think all centers, all schools, centers, colleges, everything, everything will be risk rated um, how you're going to have your um, learners in the classroom, where they're going to be seated. Everything will have to have a risk rating, I suppose. Um, and I, that's what I've been doing behind the scenes at the moment. That's what I've been working on. Um, again, PPE is going to be, we've always had it. And I suppose we've always had it in our training academy. Mm -hmm. but, you know, it's going to just have to take it up a little, little bit of a notch this time. Okay. And then, you know, the, the health and safety and COVID guidelines, you know, around the practicalities of training, are you currently working off the back to work safely protocol and then trying to kind of tailor it to your own needs exactly yeah i mean that's what we only what we can do at the moment when it comes down to actually delivering training we need to get the guidelines from the awarding bodies um which i'm sure will be you know i think people are panicking there how are they going to do this mm -hmm. How are they going to have 20 learners in a classroom, in a small classroom? But, you know, there's nothing to panic about. This will all be put in, in place for us before we, before most places start back in September. Everything should be set out. Okay. And were you actually, in terms of the academy, had you originally been in phase five, which has been like... Yeah, it's, it's, well, we are, we don't, phase five was for um, yeah. tattoo, that kind of, we don't do anything at level five, so we're okay for level four, so we are just going along with the guidelines that we start back when the schools reopen. So, oh, okay, I get you, okay, yeah, um, so you're, so you're working now towards August, September. Yes, oh. yeah, yeah, um, again, it's a little bit up in the air, we've met with uh, training academies or um private um third level there's nothing really been issued to us to say that you can reopen on this date anyway so i suppose you take it as education and you work you you go along with everybody else for september for the date end of august i think is the, is going to be the date for to reopen. okay and then just in terms of your own you know your own classroom for the want of a better word um have you started putting things in place or are you working on it at the moment no, it's, it's, for my own, I'm, I'm kind of lucky in my own um, training academy, we're a very open plan. Um, so we have lots of room to move around. So we're going to have to have, you know, you're going to have to have your two meter distances between mm -hmm. your couches or whatever you're doing. So two meters between each station or treatment couch. Um, every learner or student coming in is going to have to have their own PPE given to them. So 
there is, a, you know, the cost of our courses will, uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not um, increasing my prices or anything like that, but it will cost us a lot more to deliver okay. because we have to have PP for each learner and then obviously each client who comes in. Um, so things will change. And we had talked about online learning and things like that. It, it, it prob I can see it being incorporated, blended learning, I suppose, will have to yeah. be created into a lot of um, courses coming up. Yeah. And is there anything, um, you know, as part of the, the, the classroom or academy learning that, you know, would have been very much something you would have done before that is absolutely now going to be a no-no? Like, it's is there anything you to scrap? <laughs> It's numbers, it's sizes, it's class sizes. Okay. You have to be kept to a minimum um, to ensure spacing. Um, and also too, and again, with our own training, it's, as I said, it's assessment based. We have to have clients coming in and we don't have the room to have lots of clients coming in with students in the room at the same time. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to reduce our numbers. Okay, um, actually before I plow on there, I may as well, deal with questions as they come in and um, somebody wanted to know um, what is your advice on how to carry out skin analysis in a training environment I suppose is it or is it uh, she doesn't specify so I guess either or okay well with skin analysis I suppose if it's it's probably in a clinic um, we once we're allowed to go back to work the, we cannot have the meter social distancing. We cannot have the two meter social distancing. So we need to have, um, as therapists, obviously we're going to have our masks and we're going to have our visors. We're going to have everything. Um, but the client, the client doesn't have to wear a mask. So we can do aesthetic treatments. So we can do our peels. We can do our needling. You can do your injectables. A skin analysis is the same thing, but, um, Obviously, you're going to go through all the guidelines and all the protocols and everything before you work on the client. But um, you can do a lot. I mean, it, I suppose you have to put your costs into it as well. Um, you can do, I know you can't be tactile, but you can do a lot through a visor if a, if a learner, or sorry, if a, a client is wearing a visor. But again, all of these things cost money. Mm -hmm. But if, cover it, if, if you're um, following protocol, I can't see any reason why you can't. We have to be tactile with the skin because that's our job and that's what we do. I know, yeah. You can, otherwise, you just can't do it. Um, and actually, that that same lady there, Caroline, is her name. She went on to ask, um, "Will you, or you know, the therapist, have to ask the client specific COVID questions?" Yes, yes. In the um, the um, on gov.ie, they have the list of questions that you should ask your client. So okay. I ready and they're going to be the same for my learners as well clients learners it doesn't matter who comes in or who i'm working with will fill in this questionnaire um it's 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 quite similar to everywhere i had to go through the hospital there the other day so it's have you um been sick have you felt ill have you been have you tried yeah. it's the same it doesn't matter what business you're in so the clients will have to complete that yeah and you will have to check their temperature as well i think yeah no i think that's going to definitely become um the norm, the temperature checking. Yes. And I, is continuous training then, um, do you think, I suppose, after being, let's say you're, you've been off now for approximately three months um, mm -hmm. and a lot of, you know, everybody has been off, you know, everybody's just been sitting at home, you know, nobody's been, been actually doing their job, you know, in this aesthetics area. Um, do you think now when, you know, with all the reopening, that kind of continuous training that people would have done before is it now important more than ever because the environment is new everything yes. has changed yeah. and i think i mean god i don't know how many hygiene courses i've done online over the past three months to coming out my ears now what i've done yeah it's just to make sure i haven't missed something or there's something else i could learn or whatever but they seem to be all the same anyway um but we're all going back we all miss work i mean I know I, I teach, but my main thing is my clients. I mean, I can't wait to get back to working with clients. Um, so we want, always want to do the best. We want to do the best for our clients. So now I think we're going back with fresh ideas and how can we change things up a little bit? Um, you know, with continuous learning, especially in aesthetics, I think 
when I say to people, people ask, well, what should, course should I do next or what should I do? You have to look at what you can offer clients and you, with, with aesthetics, you have to be able to treat every skin concern or condition. So you have to have something that treats pigmentation, something that will treat a skin tag, a, a million, everything. You know, you kind of have to be able to tick it all off your list. You don't want to turn a client away for anything. Um, yeah. But that's what you, you start at. What, what am I missing? Um, and try and build something that you know you can you can treat everything and obviously well for myself I find blended um, treatments work much better you know that you're doing a little bit of IPL or a little bit of peels or whatever you know you're kind of combining things um, so I think like it's competitive market it definitely is so um, continuous learning is I, but I think we want to do it I don't think it's a chore or I don't think it's so no, we'll have to go do that. It's we want to do it because we always want to better ourselves and we always want to do the best for um, our clients. So, yeah. And is there any um, in in that sphere of the training? Is there any one area that stands out, kind of as one of the areas that you do, you do need to do the continuous? Like, are there some areas that are kind of constantly evolving? Well, uh, well it's, it's, it's the hygiene practices, isn't it? And I mean, that's so important. I'm sure everybody has done all these training courses and everything, but it's so, so important. Um, even I've, I think I've done four or five at this stage online and I signed up the World Health Organization have um, some courses as well, which is really good. And it's some of it is, it's, it's a little bit more in depth. So um, they're good ones to have a look at as well but definitely the hygiene and also how to, I suppose a lot of us are going back, not knowing how to put these um, guidelines in place. So it's, you know, if there's something there to how to reopen your salon or how to reopen your clinic, what do I need? What paperwork do I need? How do I do a risk assessment? That's something a lot of people don't know how to do. Um, yeah. So, so important um, that you risk rate everything basically. Um, and how you deal with something then, you know, that please God and nothing will happen and that staff are safe and clients are safe, but you really need to know everything, you know, God forbid something ever happened, you know? Yeah. And so those, those hygiene courses, I know you mentioned the World Health Organization, but for anybody watching, like, do they just kind of go looking for them themselves? There isn't really um, yeah. a standard sort of, well, apart from the World Health Organization. Well, nothing, I would say, that has been, you know, as an industry, we're told to do this course or whatever. You know, it, there's lots. And you know what? I always think you should do more than one training in something anyway, because you never know what you're going to miss or what you're going to learn from something else anyway. So um, there's lots out there. And I'm sure everyone who's listening here has done, has done them. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when they little else, little else to be doing. Oh, but I'm yeah. sure, you know, yeah. Work-wise, I mean, um, somebody asked a question just um, for PPE when we go back. How do you suggest it? I'm not sure now what she means there. I think probably around the, I suppose, maybe getting your stock together now. Like, is there, you know, PPE is sort of a, an umbrella term. Um, yeah, yeah. But in terms of, like, aesthetics, the basics are... In, in aesthetics, it's your um, your surgical mask, your visor, your gloves, uh, your apron, um, and that's okay. If you've got a visor, you won't need goggles. Um, but if you don't have a vi you know, a screen, a visor screen, you yeah, can have some goggles. It, it's only if you're working with injectables or you're working with blood or anything like that to protect yourself. Um, if it's just a, a skin treatment, like a peel or something like that. Um, obviously the client won't be able to wear anything because we're working on their skin. Mm -hmm. um, so it's making sure they've followed all the guidelines before they come in, you know, all your guidelines before they come into the treatment room. Um, and, you know, that's where these courses come in, how, you know, some people are starting to panic. I know people, you know, I've been talking to people, when do I wash my hands? Do I wash it before I put the mask on or after the mask? What do I do? And people mm -hmm. are panicking over little things, you know, so... I think everyone needs to just run through how you're going to do this and how you're going to put on your gloves, wash your hands. Um, it's, it's very, very simple, really, you know, and not to panic too much, I suppose. Um, yeah. 
But I think stock levels are better now. I think I think um, even suppliers have better stocks now because obviously the healthcare workers needed it. Um, they still need it, obviously, but it was more important for them to be um, supplied. So there's there's plenty out there. Yeah, and I suppose as well, um, I know you and I were talking um, yesterday and we mentioned it there earlier on as well today, but like it's looking like we're going to get the go ahead for the reopening on the 29th of June, which yeah. is what, like Two not weeks. that far off? <laughs> three know. weeks? <laughs> three like, weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's less than three weeks. Three weeks. Um, yeah, two and a half weeks. Yeah, so I suppose you would be saying to, to people that like really at this stage you need to have your, your, your PPE lined up. Yeah, yeah. And just to make sure because again, I think there might be a little bit of a rush on as well over the next few days. If yeah. Anything, you know, um, and maybe suppliers weren't prepared for this. They were prepared for plate salons to go back in July. And yeah. So they would have the stock level. So I'm not saying anyone panic. I'm not saying that. Yeah. But I'm sure, um, you know, you don't need a whole lot to start with. You know, you can just have enough to get you through the first two or three weeks. And then, you know, you know, don't panic because as well, we haven't been working. We haven't been trading. Um, so we can, you know, a lot of people are probably worried, how are they going to afford to reopen and to the cost of reopening, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, on that note of reopening, you know, what do you think like an aesthetics clinic is going to look like when it reopens? Because it's obviously not going to really look like it did before. You know, is it is it going to be a completely different environment or is it still going to have the same old feel with a few adjustments? I think, look, I suppose people are no have an idea what it's going to look like. Um, we're, we're used to, I mean, I was in the, the dentist last week and I have to say I was nervous about going in because I didn't actually know what to do. Well, how do mm. I, do I walk in? Do I knock the door? What do I do? So I think it's very, very important to have clear instructions to clients coming in. What's going to happen when you come in? I, you know, and a lot of places will have their door locked. So even on the outside, explain what to do and make it very, very easy for the client. So they're not nervous because a lot of clients are coming out for the first time to an appointment. It's probably the first appointment they've had and they're unsure of what to do when they come in. Um, it will look a little bit different. And obviously us as therapists are you know, it's all about that contact with your client and this, that smile and it's that warmth and it's that, oh, so, you know, the hug, you want to give the hug, but you can't do that. Yeah. Um, but we, you know, we have to just keep, keep, um, try, try not to make it a scary experience for the clients when they come in for the first time. Um, they, I think people know what to expect at this stage. You know, I don't Yeah, think exactly. Me. But you're, you know, you're so right as well. Like, it's not like, it's not like going into the shop to get the bread and milk, like it's so much more, you know. Um, it was always such a kind of a therapeutic experience in so many different ways. So you don't yeah. want it to change too much. You exactly. still want people to feel like they're doing something, you know, for themselves and that like it's a it's a treat time. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Be very clear on all the steps and pr protocols yourself, or even with staff. I think I know a lot, a lot of people with their their staff are worried to come back to work. They, they don't feel like they're ready. And I think a lot of people, especially because this has been brought forward, in some ways it's a little unfair for staff because maybe they feel, I don't feel like I want to go back yet. Yeah. When you're in business, you'll do anything to get back. You know, you need, it's your, you, you have to get your, your clinics back open, your salons back open. So I think staff have to be really well trained or maybe if you do a video of how they're going to look or, this is the procedure when the client walks in, this is what we're going to do and get them, just get them prepared. So on their first day back, they're not, they're not scared, you know, so. Yeah, I suppose, yeah, I was going to ask that as well around like, you know, you're like as an owner, you know, you have to kind of look after the staff as well and make sure everybody's feeling okay, you yeah. know, because you don't want that. Like, so would you kind of, would you recommend that sort of a, a dry run almost the day before or? Definitely. I think, I think they even need to see the premise, see what is going to look a little different. Walk them through. This is how we're going to greet a client. Um, this is what you're going to do when you bring them into the treatment room. 
this is what you need to do after you're finished with your client. You know, all the hygiene steps as well. Um, it will change a lot, you know, even for myself, my, I can only work on a certain amount of clients now. I can't have the same amount of clients yeah. for, um, to give me time in between to clean down, to disinfect, to, you know, to do everything. So it will change. I suppose that buzz maybe is going to be gone a little bit for a while, you know, because I, I don't think you're going to see many people when you come in, you're really going to go straight into your treatment room, you know, so. Yeah. It will, it will change and it'll take a, a while for, for therapists to get back, you know, to yeah. use it as well. It'll take a few weeks, I think, for us to get used to the new norm. Yeah, but I think as well, you know, that what we've seen in the last couple of months, just in general as a country and I suppose, as, you know, the whole world, like what really has amazed me is the way um, as human beings, we're very adaptable. And you know, the way like what, what we would have thought six months ago was, insane has now become very normal to us <laughs> you know you're walking when you're walking down the street it's very normal to stand out from the, on the pavement so that you don't walk past somebody so closely so i think we're very adaptable and we'll we'll kind of get used to things really easily and we'll make work for us because we know we have to exactly we just need to get in there and get going and exactly yeah and get used to it yeah Putting it in your head and it's not really you know you know you need to just get in there and do exactly it. The, the practicalities of it yeah and just um i wanted to talk to you as well about what you touched on there earlier on about um maybe in the future it learning will be blended it'll be a combination of online and you know real <laughs> reality training for the want of a better word um do you think that will be something that will take off because of covid or was it something that was on the cards anyway? Oh, I think, yeah, it was coming anyway. Um, I, I think blended learning is a fantastic way of learning, to be honest. Um, I think it depends on what you're learning, I suppose. The practical training, if you're doing, obviously, a laser course, you have to be there. You have to, you have to be with your um, trainer or your tutor or whatever. You, um, personally, I love that contact. You know, I love that working with students that, relationship you have um and it's great for them to bounce off each other and i suppose with, with my teaching it's postgraduate so they're all qualified therapists and they we learn so much from each other and i love that that buzz of learning together um but the cost of training and the time it takes and the travel and all of that type of thing so that um that can um I suppose if someone has to travel a distance for a course, um, yeah. maybe they need to stay overnight. So if you can reduce it down, maybe um, time-wise, you know, in the practical setting or the classroom, sorry. Um, there's a lot you can do online. I mean, actually, at the, my plan is when I can get working on people is to do a lot more um, video demonstrations. So obviously they will learn in the classroom, but they will always have that mm -hmm tutorial to support them when they're finished as well obviously at when they're finished their course um even things like online submissions of assignments portfolios all that type of stuff really yeah it should really at this stage it should be online it should be um cut down on paper as well and cut down on those folders <laughs> that we're all yeah uh, and, um but yeah like people people some people learn very well online as well um and you can learn at your own pace, you know, so I, I yeah. would definitely be, I would definitely incorporate it into my training courses in, into some of them in my longer courses, you know, obviously the shorter courses it would, wouldn't, but, um, I think it's easier for people as well. You know, I think it's, I think people want it. Yeah, no, I do. I've heard somebody saying that before as well, that some people, um, they prefer it because they can go at their own pace. Yeah. You know, some people don't, pick it up as quickly in the classroom or whatever but um I do think going forward um that idea of blended kind of for everything is lovely because like none of us want to be doing all of one thing it's even like the working from home thing for people in offices I think working from home is lovely you know a couple of days a week but you don't want to be doing it every day of the week because then you never see anybody so it's yeah. a bit like the learning as well it's lovely to combine it with yeah. the classroom yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And just it's it's the 
practicalities as well. It's, um, you know, and obviously in the bigger, in the bigger classroom settings or the year long courses or whichever, um, it does, it, 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 we're going to have to do it anyway. I mean, I suppose when you look at, um, um, the schools when they reopen, how, I suppose we're going to we're going to follow those and they're they're going yeah. to and see how they do it as well. You know, so that will be interesting. Yeah, and do you think um, both in that sense in the academy and in the clinic, um, that the latest technology, whatever it may be, is can improve business? Um, as in, do you mean with uh, learning with online learning or with learning and say with with stuff in the clinic as well like to kind of constantly be on top of what the latest is oh yeah yeah well definitely in the clinic I think we can I mean I see a lot of people going through the booking systems now which um it does make sense we have a lot of clients to get in contact with and to reach out to now you know before we get back yeah um even even what I was saying about explaining to a client how they will um, what to expect when they come into your clinic, yeah, you know, that can be sent to them before they come come in and they know what to do. Um, even online consultations are a great idea because they will. We we need to spend more time um, blocking out our appointments. So I suppose if we had the, the paper based consultation completed before your client comes in, um, yeah. Sorry. Um, before the client comes in, um, that will give you a little bit more time as well with your client, you know. So um, definitely, I think there'll be a lot more um, uh, technology will definitely take over, I think. Yeah, I think it's, that's, that's kind of, I suppose, the big thing that's come out of COVID is uh, how much we need technology and I suppose you can be one of those people that turns their nose up at it and says, you know, oh no, like, you know, we don't want to go down that road of completely being taken over by it, but uh, it's really served us well during this time. It has, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, now, before I let you go, uh, I'll just check to see if there's, uh, oh yeah, somebody called, I don't know if you know him, Niall Rafferty? Oh yeah, hi Niall. <laughs> yeah, um, he just said, great talk, Nicola, and iTech, and I'm not, sure is that pronounced DTEC or VTCT? VTCT. Yeah, we'll have COVID-19 health and hygiene regulated CPD qualifications specific to hair, beauty and sports industry and private colleges should gear up for opening mid-July and he said well done for a great talk. Oh, thanks man. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's, it's great that there's a resource out there for us because, you know, we didn't really know, I didn't know where to tell anybody to go or just, you know, as you said, you just had to find this yourself. So that's great. That, that's yeah. So that, I guess, will be logging on to the VCT CT, um, website. Um, I might check with them about that afterwards. Yeah, um, that was all brilliant. Thank you so much for that information. Um, it's lovely to hear about... Um, as I said to you earlier on, like uh, we're hearing all about salons, but you know we're not hearing about. Well, we are hearing, but we're not just not hearing as much about like the other areas we need to consider going forward because uh, the academies are obviously hugely important as well, and uh, and the aesthetics industry. I think um, I know I had asked you separately about that. Like you, you do believe that um, it's it's going to be in high demand when we reopen. Oh, definitely. It, it, you know what aesthetics always has been. It's 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 um even more popular than ever. I think. Yeah. In the years, it's just you know people want results and they'll get they they will get the results. You know, it's a results driven. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's kind of you know the whole thing is if you if you look good, you feel good. If you feel good, you look good. All that sort of thing. So uh, yeah, and my the message I've been getting anyway from talking to different people is that like it's going to it's it's a bit like the hairdressers that everybody's just dying for the aesthetics clinics to reopen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're all dying to get back, so. Yeah, exactly. So listen, thank you so much for joining us. Um, really nice to meet you on screen. And uh, for everybody listening in, um, I just wanted to let you all know that you can sign up for our webinars um, if you go on our website, so www.professionalbeauty.ie uh, forward slash webinars. 
and you can you can sign up for them then um, every week. We tend to do them on a Thursday. This week we did it at, at two, but next week we will be doing uh, one at 12. And uh, before I move on to aesthetics as well, I wanted to remind everybody that we have our inaugural, inaugural awards coming up this year in November. And if you go on that same website, professionalbeauty.ie, and instead go to forward slash awards, um, you can read all about them and there's a, a special aesthetics um, area or category, I should say. And we would love if anybody was, was watching to uh, enter, uh, including yourself, Nicola. <laughs> and, uh, um, and next week we will be, our webinar will be at 12 next week and we're going to be joined by Jennifer Cody from Beautylicious, if I'm pronouncing that right, and uh, she's going to be talking about it. She owns a beauty and holistic salon and uh, it's going to be lovely because she's going to be talking about self-care for all of you guys um, as we come up to reopening and um, how you can mind your bodies and your heads and your heart. And because uh, obviously we're heading into like uh, what's going to be, you know, um, a really busy period. Um, but you know your your busyness is going to be different, I suppose, to before because you have to stagger appointments and it's a whole new world. But it's you know we can cope with it. Um, so she's going to be talking about all that you know self care for you, so that you can care for your clients. So that'll be lovely. So um, thank you again, Nicola, for joining us, yeah. and thanks everybody for tuning in. And we will see you all next week at twelve. Bye for now. Yeah.